it going everyone? So welcome back. I'm still in Cornwall. It's another day. The sun is shining and I'm straight into it. I'm using my wooden spear gun which I've been wanting to try out for a long time. It feels really good in the water and it's a lot easier to move about than that 110. It's got 16 mil bands so it's going to pack a punch and I've double wrapped it as well so I can get the distance on some fish that are sitting far off. I'm straight into a shoal of mullet which started by feeding on the string weed as they were coming towards me and then it doesn't take them long to clock me and they're off and I could not get a shot at the fish that I really wanted to. Next thing I bump into is a bass and he's stuck right down in the kelp and then he just starts to swim off and I managed to get a shot off. You can see it's actually quite a long shot and this is where double wrapping can really come into its own. If this bit of footage doesn't show you how shallow I actually am I don't know what will. I'm basically on my belly in the kelp here and I've come all the way through the shallows and I've just about to come out into this opening where it's a sandy seabed but there's string weed everywhere and it looks really fishy. So I really take my time, I just crest over the edge and I keep my gun back as far as I can so the bass or whatever's there doesn't get scared of a barrel and a shiny spear sticking out the end. And I just stop right on the edge for a good amount of time looking about because this is what you have to do. You have to be really quiet, really still, and you want to see the fish before they see you. So the slower you go, the more of a chance you have. Eventually I look to the left and I spot something just at the back of this string weed and I make out that it's a nice bass. So I kind of just guess a shot of where's the best place to put the spear. And you, you can see a tail one end and the head the other end and you just have to go for it. Thankfully, I managed to get it, and I was straight over to catch it. I couldn't put an edit together like this without giving Matt the GoPro and him getting some pretty cool footage of him smashing a nice big mullet on that brand new roller we made on the last episode. You can see how quick he manages it to swing around and that's carbon barrel as well. It's the roller so it's got the power and he managed to get it in the perfect headshot. On the way back in, we met up with Zach Cart. You might have known him from Wild and Winging It, which is a YouTube channel which you really need to check out if you're into camper vans and doing them up. Really funny and really cool watching. And he has a big smile on his face and it doesn't take him long to show us why. We've been out the last few days and we're back to Spearfish UK to weigh some bass and other bits and pieces. Mark got brilliant bass today and a, what is it, turbot? Yeah, man. Zach also managed to smash a massive bass. Yeah, oh, you should have said I would have picked some up. Which I'm pretty sure he's very stoked about. So, uh, buzzing. Absolutely buzzing. Okay. Yeah, there. Uh, That's it's cool. It's in behind the house. It's not small, is it? Like, it's lovely and clean. Oh, mate. Oh. No way. Hold on. Where's that? Yeah, boy. Oh, oh, should we throw it together with both our bass? Yeah, fuck Hold yeah. on. Let's, uh, what, are they the same way? No, here's just three and a half. Mine's three. <sighs> three, six. No. Uh, Three, five, five, oh. Well in. Now that's what you call some happy chappies with some big slabs of silver. So, out spearfishing UK, and I've had a great day bass fishing with Matt Coombe, but I thought I'd give you a bit of a rundown of what's in here, and the best person to do that is Leith, who you might speak to every now and then. Yeah, well, quite a bit, yeah. So, you walk in, We've got your fin display wall, your plastic fins which are suited to your beginners, uh, your fiberglass fins, uh, Ruku are bomb proof, will last you years and years. You've got your cheaper kind of fiberglass Picassos which again, exceptional. Uh, and then you move on to your carbons, your more uh, expert level fins, uh, your Negras which again, bomb proof. Uh, I can test for that because I have a pair of Enegras and I absolutely love them. 
especially in the shallow water hunting today, you have to be really quiet and they're perfect for being quiet, as well as strong, getting smashed off the rocks yeah. and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. And then this side, we have, I mean, these aren't even everything we stalk or sell. Uh, we just don't have the space to get everything up on display. We've got our wetsuits ranging from Picasso, Apnea, uh, Ucresi, Zane Wright from Australia, Moray from New Zealand, Cressies again, Salvama, Jack Bueno, uh, and then up top are the vast majority of the spear guns that we sell. I think we stock roughly 50 different models of spear guns, give or take, and there is quite a hefty amount and we are more than happy to spend as much time as we need to go through and be very tailor specific to your needs uh, whatever you need we'll be there answer any questions i've definitely um i hound spearfishing uk the other day i went <laughs> to do make a roller out of my normal rob allen called them up Lathan and chris were super helpful told me what i needed and i managed to make it within a week of getting the parts and it's insane so i can't wait to shoot fish with that so don't be afraid to give them a message and say what you want what you want to shoot and they'll help you out definitely cool. so over here we've got a mask wall you try them on you make sure your mask fits uh, this is kind of the most important bit of kit yeah. in terms of comfort if you can't see anything you're not going to be able to shoot anything uh, we've got up here our blue water kit. We are proud to say that we are the only shop in the UK that stocks actual blue water kit. Uh, I mean, this last gun that this, the Death Hammer shot, uh, the last gun, the last uh, species was a great big marlin. The last species that the Blood Hammer, uh, Rife Island uh, uh, shot, was a great big sailfish. Uh, they are designed for big game hunting abroad. So spears for any occasion, we've got our Rob Allen carbon spears in 6.3 mil up to 7.5. We've got our Pathos spears 6.25 mil up to 7.5. Double floppers, notches, uh, fins, whatever you name it, call it. We've more than likely got it. Salvamar, cheaper spears if you're wanting something cheap and cheerful. Uh, Rife, American style spears, uh, if you're needing spears for an American style gun. And we've got our four spears, uh, which at the minute, uh, we will soon be having the Headhunter Ruler spears, which we are very excited to be stocking soon. Uh, and obviously, Big spears boys. that are taller than me. Uh, they're two meter, again, for your blue water hunting. And on the back here, We've got all the spear guns that we currently stock. Uh, we do need to update them and get a bit more in stock. We're a little bit low. Uh, we do have 400 spear guns from Rob Allen turning up in about a month's time. So that'll fill up nicely. Uh, you've got Sports Tubes, Aim Right, Salvama, Sigil Sub, Rob Allen, Pathos, Echelon, uh, Picasso, Cressy. So out hunting for bass, I managed to blow up one of my rollers. Rollers? Do that again, eh? Look at everybody looking at me like that. <laughs> um, yeah, out shooting bass with Matt Coombe today. He's playing about with as many rollers as he can think of. Uh, one of my bands broke on my 90, wooden 90 that I made. And I might as well get it fixed whilst I'm here. So that should have been 46 or 49, a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. And then, centimeters of I'd do 44 centimeters for you. With lathe measuring up and getting the exact length of rubber that I need for this gun, it means you're gonna get the max amount of power out of those rubbers and it's not too much to pull back basically. And he cuts them pretty swiftly and then it's on to the tying line, which I am obviously going to go for bright green. There you go, all ready to go. Hopefully I can uh, slay some bass with that tomorrow or maybe even this evening. So we've not only just been to Spearfish in UK to get some
piece is fixed and way you fish and stuff like that. We've even tempted them to come out for a dive. So there's now gonna be five or six of us coming out for a dive. Yeah. <laughs> And with the sun coming down and an end to another day of diving in Cornwall which has probably been an even better day since I've got the hunting a bit better the technique better I start heading in and I bump into Matt who has an even bigger grin on his face from earlier today and what does he have in his hand another big slab of silver And once we're back at camp, we have to do the chores, obviously. Always a good idea to wash your gear off with fresh water, especially if you're diving a lot. The smell can build up in your suit, obviously. And it's good just to give it all your gear, the fret, the fins, fresh water, your guns, and everything like that. And it just makes it a bit more enjoyable for going in the next day. And then it's also meat prep time. Get all the bass sorted that we've shot over the last couple days. Zach's currently um, filling his monster bass, ready for a monster feed. Yeah, boy. Not bad from a couple days fishing. Good on you, whereas you can move that if you want. I see where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> Straight through your hand. Is that what? I've left you. It's now meat factory time. Um, fillets which we've just done a whole factory of filleting back in packet ready to take back to Shetland fill the mum's freezer she's wanted some fish desperately so I could be here while thank goodness we have beer cheers boy cheers With the vacuum packer running hot and the beers flowing, I will see you all next time where hopefully we're going to be getting out on Zach's boat and I can't wait.